So, Jonathan Lovitz is one of my closest friends, and he also is, like, kind of like a gay icon in New York City. <laughs> For all of you viewers who don't live here, uh, I'm going to move my fake non-prescription glasses up so we don't have the reflection. Jonathan is uh, a well-known actor and performer and activist here in New York. So, tell us a little bit about, like, how you like got to, like, how, so you're, like, you're, like, a big deal. You've had, like, a TV show. <laughs> you're, like, are at every gay event ever. How did that, like, come about? I, well, it, it's been awesome. Um, and I, it's been uh, an incredible ride. Um, I have always been a theater performer, started off in that. I did a ton of theater right out of college, was on tour for a couple of years, um, settled down in New York, and after doing some theater here, fell into TV. Mm -hmm. And that, we, it was one of those... As uh, you do. Well, it was one of those, um, say yes to the thing that scares you most. Sure. Which is sort of kind of my advice on life now, which... You know, the, the thing that I always thought, no, I'm never going to do it, never going to do TV, um, ended up being the most incredible thing for me because uh, from the very first show I ever did, um, I swore that I wanted to be out mm -hmm. um, just because of a bunch of experience I had had and knowing other people in the industry who had chosen to be out in their career and had heard, oh, it's going to destroy everything for you. Um, I was out to prove that that was not only uh, false for my own career, but false as, as a message to put out sure. there. Um, you know, I'm very lucky to have known and worked with amazing people like Wilson Cruz and mm -hmm. Rory and like a lot of our friends yeah. who have made no bones about their private life because they also realize it in no way intercedes with their, their work. It doesn't affect who they are as people in, in, in any way that doesn't make them better. Well, yeah, I think that's stronger. like, in, it's like in any industry. So like, if you're like a lawyer or like a cop, like you're not going to be like a bad cop or a bad lawyer because sure. you're gay. So like, how is that going to affect like your acting? You right. Know, your and if anything, you know, we live, right? we live in this world where, uh, you know, when we were growing up and not, not all that long ago, um, not that long ago, really. <laughs> not all that long ago, we had two choices and it was Will and Grace or it was Queer as Folk and there was oh, really nothing yeah. in between. And I think it's so incredible that you can be a young person right now and flip to any channel, not just extended cable, you can flip through network, network television tele right now. Prime time, network yeah, television. and watch two young boys in love, young, you know, young women discovering themselves, the whole nine years, and that we're not, we're not afraid to talk about people as people and sex as sex and all the things that kept us so squeamish about real world issues mm. on television. And I think that that's spread to print media, to, I mean, like, look at what we're talking about on things like HuffPost, um, very openly, and very, uh, and, and without feeling that there should be shame or stigma about it, just saying, no, this is very much real world news. Well, so what's really been neat is in the past few months, I've been speaking at a lot of business dinners, uh -huh. um, organizations and uh, magazines and networks and things that are being honored for their work in inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and some major incredible power players are there, everyone from you know, NBC and HBO and the State Department to, uh, you know, to, to small hometown businesses that are local LGBT suppliers and diversity suppliers. Yeah. Um, and it, that's where the difference is going to be made because think of it. Ten years ago, did we ever think The Gap would have Rufus Wainwright and his husband front and center on their national ad for Christmas? Or uh, even Rory O'Malley, who did my uh, last episode, right. and his boyfriend Gerald were in a huge campaign for them, you know, where they're yep. like, we're wearing the same t-shirt, yeah. they did that for Gap. And I think that's so, like, incredible, because I remember growing up, even like, you know, like we said, it wasn't that long ago, yeah. like I'm only 25, and so like, even ten years ago when I was 15, yeah. uh, oh my god, um, uh, there... <laughs> There was nothing, right. there was nothing like that. So kids growing up today have like this whole other outlook, but then we have stuff like in our election that we just had, where we have the whole other side of it, which, you know, I'm t all about a multi-party system and like, you know, uh, being a democracy and like the right to like be a Republican or Democrat, but then you have like these extreme right-wingers right. who are like making these kids feel like they're not... Uh, they're not good enough, or they're, like, not worthy. So I think it's really, I think it takes a lot of balls for these companies to, like, step up and, like, do campaigns like that. And to say, like, uh, you know, like, start, so Chick-fil-A did their whole yep. thing this year, and then Starbucks decided to do, instead of, like, a Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day, they just did an Equality Appreciation right. Day. <laughs> which is, like, we shouldn't have to have Equality Appreciation Days to begin with, because it should just be, like, yeah. part of our psyche to know that, like, all people should... Be allowed to well, but go there. that's what's great about the, exactly where we are right now. We're in this kind of amazing crucible of time where 
we know, and the companies know, and the government knows, and even down to the furthest white ring, right wing nut job, they're aware that we're about to pass through to the other side of this, and equality is yeah. going to win out. It's the inevitable course of American pluralism that enough people will be convinced and persuaded and come to the realization that right, the American dream for all includes all for and, all people, yeah. right? And 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 in you know in the same respect, if you want your guns, I have the same right to you know to speak publicly about my husband. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, the, the, <laughs> the Constitution is a big blanket that everyone can sleep under at one time. Sure. Um, and. I like that. Let's all let's all grab that little slumber party. Let's all grab that little constitutional blanket and cuddle up, America. I'm gonna Absolutely. cuddle up with you, America. But, but, I'm what's ready. Great, but what's great about it is, is it, it serves as a reminder that um, you know, like you said, it takes a lot of guts for these companies to come out and very publicly. Well, work, yeah. But they're realizing, no, we're much closer to winning this than than, than not. You sure. know, and and so why not be on the right side of history. It's not even about being progressive anymore because no one's really leading the pack. Everyone's just, just going, kind of, coming think, to common sense. I think people just kind of know, like, you know, that marriage is legal in many countries now, in many states. The right. sky hasn't fallen. We're right. still here. You can blame massacres and natural disasters on homosexuality all you want, but that's not the case right. because that stuff happened before, too. Like... <laughs> So I always think it's such a, like, I, I get, like, a real tickle out of it when people are like, oh, my God, Hurricane Sandy happened because America accepts gays. Well, guess what? Only ten states have, not even, like, eight states have marriage, and there's still, like, a lot that discriminate, like, you yeah. can be fired for being gay. So it's like, that's not even, like, a plausible excuse. Like, sure. like, that's ridic that's ridiculous. Um, so, okay, so, so you've done all this great work. Yeah, thank you. Uh like, I think it's so amazing. You're such a role... Like, to me, like, as my friend, you're, like, such a role model. So what is it like... Like, like what was your... Like, so, okay, so, like, there's a time before you were Jonathan Lovett's gamest celebrity. When did... Like, what was it like for your family? Like, were you like, hey, it's my bar mitzvah, I'm gay? Or, like, like what did you... Like, how did that, like, happen? You know, I, I'm I'm very lucky, and it's one of the reasons that I want to work with, with LGBT kids so often sure. now is because I know how fortunate of an experience I had. I grew up in South Florida, where... Yeah, you, you know, you couldn't throw a locket without hitting a homosexual, and so it was going to happen, um, and they were likely Jewish, and so I, you know, I grew up in a very, very, uh, you know, um, very open-minded neighborhood, um, you know, in South Florida, anyone who's ever been there and knows that, you know, we've got one of the most thriving uh, uh, gay scenes in America, and it always was that way, and it was really neat to, for me to grow up with older role models, because I was, you know, a kid actor and working in local theaters with oh, a lot sure. of great older gentlemen who took me under their wing for an education. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I felt very comfortable going out early on, and, me, you know, I had a boyfriend, um, a junior and senior year of high school, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I went to college out and ready to, you know, to date and be, an expl you know, I didn't need to kick Where the door open. College? University of Florida, go Gators. Hey, Gators! Hey. Um, I don't. I didn't know that mascot until so you said it, but I wanted to pretend that I knew. It's okay. It's okay. I'll get you. I got you. Will you chat, I like will you chat for me though. It will, it will mean a lot wait, to me. This, this, this is the Gator chat. Okay. chat. You need to. Okay. Yes, that's it. That's it. There you go. This is what you do this at like, is, football this is games at, or something. At everything. Yeah. Um, it's just. It's part of the way of life. I'm going to chop you. <laughs> I'm a Gator. Well done. I'm an honorary Gator. I'm You're, gonna. I'm gonna come to the University of Gatorville and. <laughs> Shop but I gotta say, so that was that was something that was really cool about coming out <laughs> so early and having it be such an easy process. Like I literally, I told I have two sisters who are incredible and both phenomenal parents and now teachers, so they understand the importance of listening and understanding, you know, y young people's needs. And, yeah. and 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 we've had a lot of discussion about that. How my coming out to them made them aware that there's so much going on in their kids' lives that they're not yeah. even aware of at the end of the school day. And to be receptive and open and, and listening for cues from kids, which is something I think a lot of teachers are now realizing mm -hmm. it's going to fall on them because they're going to see firsthand yeah. the bullying, the you know the, the depression. They're going to see these things that we tend to keep from our families mm -hmm. while our guard's down at school. One thing that I was really grateful to be involved with this year was a campaign um, by a few different organizations who asked people who are openly gay in the media and have a strong connection to their hometown mm -hmm. to get back in touch with their high school. And I wrote my current high school principal, who was not the same one that was there when I was, but a lot of the administrative staff is still there. And I wrote, you know, I cc'd kind of, as many people as I could find on my 
on the website for my high school and said, hey, here's my story from when I was out in public school, mm -hmm. in, you know, here with you. As you're reading this right now, someone's being shoved into a locker. Someone's being called something they don't deserve. And Such not a, And this like is all, oh, all and this is uh, yeah. kids. Kids who I mean, this is happening to kids with glasses, let alone kids, you yeah. know, repressing no. dark sexual secrets. Like this is <laughs> this is this is happening to kids of all kinds. And just to be aware that someone is having it harder than you think, mm -hmm. just outside your office door, is an important reminder that any of us who have been through it have yeah. come out on the other side stronger, need to relay back to those in charge. Because it's one thing to get you know, mandates from the state saying, now we have to be on the lookout for bullying, versus hearing the first-hand accounts about what it did to us and how we got out of it better and stronger today yeah. serves as a really important reminder. So anyone watching, and I think get back in touch with your high school, with your college, let them know that you made it through how much stronger you are now, and what they could have done, what you wish someone had told you and your teachers when you were there and didn't hear. There are far bigger things going on in the world than our own petty lives, mm -hmm. and yet we are all one click away from them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's so important for people to take advantage of things like Twitter to share their stories. So while, you know, while there is a, a major revolution going on halfway around the world and people are sharing real-time updates, it's also important for you to be sharing your real-time updates about your coming out experience because someone scrolling through that somewhere on the other side of the world doesn't have your rights but is being inspired by the and fact that you it. do. Yeah, you just type in a hashtag and, right. you'll, and you'll see it. Well, listen, I think you are so major. Oh, and shucks. speaking of Twitter, we're going to post links to uh, Jonathan's Twitter account and his Please website. Please bug me. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, tweet him your stories. Tell him hello. And uh, thank you for watching our latest episode. Jonathan Lovitz, I just love you to bits and pieces. Likewise. Thank you for joining this. A little potato tot, wherever the doggy <laughs> went. We love potato. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Up Post.